Hello, welcome to System Manager 7.5 Release Introduction. Let's see the most important features and enhancements included in the release. First, we're going to see enhancements on asset-related fields that allow System Manager to become a better and more flexible asset tracking tool. Then we will see the new Remove Circuit feature. Next, a quick look at the circuit history feature that now includes work order ID information. Last, we will introduce the new patch data tool that helps in the migration of patching data from one controller to another. To close, we will quickly go over some other minor features and enhancements included in this release. If you want to check the full list of things included, please refer to the official release notes document. Let's talk about object fields first. These fields can be found in the Administration tab, User Defined Fields. You can define up to 20 fields. They all come empty in a new database, but you can select one, edit, and type a field label or name, define if it's a required field, meaning it cannot be left empty, and then place a check mark in all the object types that you want this field to be used for. In the same way, you can enable more user-defined fields at any time. Here I have vendor, lease number, lease start, lease end, and ELIN that I can use to keep track of my emergency location identifier for rooms. Next, we can go to the Site Manager and either add objects and populate the values in these fields or edit the existing objects. For example, here I'm trying to edit an equipment room and I cannot save it until I populate the ELIN required field. If I edit one of my switches, I'm going to see that the field vendor is available, but I can leave it empty as it is not required. Also, when adding a new server, I can populate information in the four fields at the bottom, vendor, lease number, lease start, and lease end dates. In summary, you can now configure up to 20 object fields, assign the field name, enable each field for one or more object types, and determine whether the field is a required field or is optional. Once these fields are configured, users can start populating data by using the web UI or also through the import tool. Reports are also being updated to include asset information. Next, we're going to talk about Remove Circuit feature. This is a new feature that replaces the Remove Services old feature. It's very similar, but provides more flexibility. We're going to use this simple database with Server 1 with copper and fiber ports. They're all connected. I can tell that by the icon. And if we select port 1 and trace it, we see the circuit in this port. It goes through one, two, three patch connections and ends in a switch ABC1, port 1, this is the IP. The port in the switch is configured in VLAN 1. It's a 1 gigabit port, service LAN blue. My second server port has a similar circuit but ends in a VLAN 2 switch port that has no service DAC. The third port in my server has a partial circuit. So now let's use the Remove Circuit feature on port number one. At the bottom, the feature shows the trace. The top option is to remove all patch connections. The alternative is to pick the second option and select the patch connections we want to keep. 
also we have the option to create a work order with all the removals or just bypass the work order and document the removals straight into the database. I'm going to choose to remove all through a work order process scheduled for immediate implementation. And we see the work order icon next to the port. On port number two, I'm going to use just to show the capabilities different options. So I'm going to bypass the work order and remove all connections. So as we see, in one click, the software removed the three patch connections in that circuit. In summary, the remove circuit feature is very useful when you need to plan to remove connections associated to a given switch port, server port, panel port, or faceplate. It shows you the trace, it lets you decide whether to remove all the connections or some connections, and also it lets you decide if you want to create a work order with these removals or if they have already happened, lets you document their removal directly into the database. The next topic is circuit history feature. This feature is really useful, especially for troubleshooting purposes, as it lets you pick a port in the database and see the history of all different circuits over time that this port has been part of. Let's take a look at the feature. So I'm going to pick an outlet in this case and open the circuit history feature to see all the circuits in this outlet. The first one is when the outlet was cabled to the back of my panel. The second, through work order A01, a patch connection was added and connected this outlet to switch port 2. The third entry tells me the patch was disconnected and there was no scheduled work order for that change. Then the patch was put back in place and connected the outlet to the same switch port as before. And the last entry tells me that the patch was again removed, but this time with a work order associated to that change. In summary, the circuit history feature keeps track of circuit changes over time and shows you a list of all dates and times when a change happened, shows you the resulting circuit and now it also lets you know if the change was scheduled in a work order or was an unscheduled change. Next, let's talk about the patch data tool. This is a standalone program that we have included in System Manager 7.5 installation package. And the purpose of this tool is to read patching information about a zone and be able to push this information into new replacement controller units installed in the zone. So you can use this tool in the case when you need to replace one or more units for any reason or also if you decide to upgrade your Envision managers to the new models. Lastly, let me mention a few other enhancements included in this release. The API has now several new functions, especially around system objects, managed network equipment object, and port details. We have also included several new PoE gauges that can be added to dashboards. And finally, you can now save scheduled reports as PDF or Excel files. So this is all in the release. We thank you for being here and we hope to see you soon in the next one.